Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel is Finding Value. Today we're gonna to talk about uranium, uh, specifically we'll go over some charts, show you guys uh, that we are breaking out on the Sprout Physical Uranium Trust. Uh, things are starting to heat up a little bit. Fingers crossed, hopefully we can get some momentum to the upside and start breaking some of these uh, channels here. Uh, again, I'm playing this for the longer term, bigger picture view. Uh, I know some people are probably getting excited about uranium knowing that we've broken up to the upside. I can also go over some ratios of uh, uranium, uranium ETF versus other ETFs and show you the outperformance that is potentially there. Uh, I do think that it's possible that we get a big break and a big run. Uh, again, I don't know, if, that's not what I'm predicting. I'm just saying it's possible. Uh, one thing that is that, that we need to notice and need to focus on is the commodities, it's coming up. Uh, it's breaking to the upside uh, and, it, and it, it broke out. The commodity itself did. Uh, now we're starting to see the Sprout Physical Uranium Trust break out. We've seen SWU. SWU is the enrichment side of things. Uh, that's going. That's gone vertical, guys. So that goes vertical and then it feeds back down to where the base um, metal is, the, the commodity, U308. Then that's going to feed through the financial products, I think. I think that's the case. So we can look at it. I can show you what we've got for, for data here and um, give you my financial opinions around it. Again, I'm not a short-term trader. Uh, I am a, a longer-term holder. Uh, I've been holding since 2020, and I've been accumulating along the way. Uh, I'm not claiming that I know every little single market movement in the short term, but it is looking a lot better than what it was before. So let's let's digest some of these and break some of these down. So I've got the Sprout Physical Uranium Trust in front of us right here. Um, what is noted here is that we've broken out of the downtrend line. That is a big deal. Um, generally, what happens is it takes some buying pressure or force to break through these downtrend lines and get above them. We've got another one above us that's running across the... Um, it's running across the top here. You can see that we traded, we hit it through here, we hit it a couple times in there, we hit it again here, uh, we hit our head on it here, we hit it there. So we've hit this resistance line a few times and I'm um, looking at this from a monthly candlestick basis, this looks really good. If we can break through here, um, and, I, and I'm not stating that we're just gonna go straight up, uh, but we can work our way, maybe we hit our head, come back up, maybe we bust through and do a retest move, whatever the, the path is. Um, we are gaining strength in the short term. Uh, this is a weekly basis. What I look for are these large buying candlestick pressure and smaller consolidations, smaller consolidations, big buying pressure, smaller consolidation. Um, we have kind of an equal move there, but we got a big bullish engulfing here and another bullish engulfing here. That looks good to try to move higher. So that is the characteristic in the candlesticks that I look for to see if we can potentially uh, bust on out of here. And right now, the Sprofus Uranium Trust looks excellent. Uh, URNM is also following suit. Uh, this is the ETF. Uh, URNM, you can see that we're starting to get some good solid uh, pressure in here. Uh, basically, we're in that dead period. The dead periods where the buyers equal the sellers and you don't get much price movement in terms of volatility up and down. I mean, we're getting volatility on a short-term basis, but what I look for are the size of this, you know, these moves here. And we're getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and eventually we're gonna break to the upside. Um, that is basically downward selling pressure occurring here and upward buying pressure at these points down here. And that is what, uh, is basically causing this movement to go sideways. Uh, we get to a point where we go into a period where the buyers equal the sellers. Now, that's one thing, and someone will say, well, how do you know that this is going to break uh, to the upside? Well, number one, we don't know for sure, but we have evidence that the Sprout Physical Uranium Trust is breaking to the upside, and we also have SWU that's already swooing to the upside massively. That's filtering down to the commodity itself. And uh, the commodity itself, the uranium futures pricing, is continuing to go higher and it's broken to the upside. I don't have that chart in trading view here because for some reason it's not showing up on mine. But that's broken to the upside. 
So the evidence of the commodity itself breaking to the upside, um, there's evidence there. We're also seeing more contracting uh, occurring with uh, uranium, the commodity itself, uh, with utility companies. So I think that we're probably going to see a move on up and a break to the upside because of all those things. And we're starting to look good here uh, for uranium. The next thing I do is I start to look at the ETFs. I say, okay, well, how is this performing uh, overall compared to the overall market? So this is URNM versus XLE. And let me tell you guys, this looks really good. We've got a downtrend line that's broken to the upside. And remember the characteristic I look for. I look for large buying pressure, small selling pressure. We can see this exhibited, that trait, all through here. Big green candlesticks, small red candlesticks. Uh, and then the trait changed, and we've got larger red candlesticks and, and smaller green candlesticks in this trait in here. But if you notice on the right-hand side, what are we getting? The green army showing up. Uh, the green army is large green candlesticks, uh, small red candlesticks, and they start to outnumber the red days. The, the size of those candlesticks change. Uh, and I think by looking at this, the size has changed and we could uh, work our way on higher. And again, I'm not playing the short term here. I'm just saying it looks good. Uh, and I am looking at certain positions to take in the sector. Uh, URNM versus natural gas. Now, this is going to be a standoff because natural gas is uber cheap at the moment, but still looks good. Uh, we're at a very high level here. Uh, I, I do think natural gas is a very cheap commodity. Uh, I would be buying natural gas up here, <laughs> uh, but I, I also think your uh, is, is also good. Uh, URNM versus uh, XOP. And you can see that we're basically moving sideways here in a little channel. It's basing out. So what we want to look for ne next is we go in and we say, okay, what are the characteristics of these candlesticks look like? Um, we can see that we've got some good buying pressure uh, on this move here and this move here. We've got some good ones in here, and it's usually small red candlesticks pulling back. We've got another gigantic one that showed up today. Uh, so that's good. Hopefully, we can get some momentum to the upside, and URNM can outperform uh, XOP. And I'm an owner of both of these ETFs, uh, but I, I'm, I'm cool with URNM or URNJ taking off here. I'm, I'm cool with that. <laughs> URNM versus Platinum. Uh, we can see that we've been at this resistance line here. We're just kind of moving sideways against that asset. Uh, I do think platinum, I know this is an unfair comparison because I'm using an ETF, which is leveraged, you know, equities are leveraged to the price move versus a commodity itself. But platinum is a very good uh, commodity to be looking at because it's so undervalued. Uh, URNM versus NDQ. Uh, we can see that we kind of came up here. We've broken to the downside. And that still looks like we could head a little bit lower, but we've got the big. Um, our performance today. We'll see how this looks and what it does for URNM. Hopefully that momentum can break out of its uh, pattern that it created that I showed earlier in dollar terms. URNM is starting to outperform uh, the CRB index and it's at, a, it's at a pretty cheap level. I like this setup here. See where I circled that? Big green candlestick, small selling pressure. Big green candlestick, small selling pressure into a bullish engulfing pattern. I do think that looks good to roll on higher. Uh, URNM versus OIH, the uh, energy service companies. That This here looks pretty good. Uh, we're breaking this to the upside. I can also go off this uh, closing price, the closing price here, and kind of come down. You can see we went into a dead period here where the buyers equal the sellers right on a support level. And we're starting to break to the upside for this ratio. And you can, if you zoom in, you can see that we had nice, good, strong outperformance today. And again, let's hope that can continue. I don't want to make predictions. I'm just stating that uh, we've got good momentum in URNM in relationship to everything else that's trading. URNM versus REMX. Again, we've, we've made our way up to this level. Maybe we can start breaking to the upside here. Uh, we've got a nice, strong day today. We've got some good, strong movements with small small down candlesticks. Uh, that generally is the ingredient for a move higher. URNM versus COPX, you can see the strong outperformance here. 
Uh, on the right-hand side, we can go to the monthlies too. The monthlies put in a big bullish engulfing here. Looks fantastic for a grind on up for URNM. And then URNM versus uh, the S&P 500, we're back to support. I drew that a, a while back. And today we got nice, good support right there. And we've got a big green candlestick showing up. Let's hope we can outperform. And just by looking at the right-hand side, I can also see GDX and SILJ did quite well against a lot of other uh, sectors as well. Uh, I do think that precious metals uh, is another sector that, that can also do very well. And I'll just kind of run through a couple. Uh, and I'll, I'll do it from a longer-term picture. This is uh, GDX versus REMX doing a retest. I think we will go higher there. Uh, GDX versus uh, SILJ. Uh, let me zoom in here and see if we're getting any sort of selling pressure up here. Not yet. Not yet, but I do expect this to head uh, lower. GDX versus URNM. Now, we don't have that outperformance for GDX outperforming URNM. URNM is taking a uh, taking its fate into its own hands. It's starting to outperform, guys. Uh, GDX versus XOP. Uh, I do think this will work its way higher for GDX. GDX versus COP. It's working its way higher uh, against Kind of breaking out here, it looks like. And then GDX versus uh, OIH is breaking to the upside as well. And I do think that we could see a, a move on up for GDX. Uh, the market conditions right now are favoring the uh, precious metals. Uh, oh, I, I should refrain myself. The market conditions could favor it if TYX, TNX starts to head higher. Uh, what that means is that we're seeing the uninversion of the yield curve. And, and generally, when you see that, you'll start to see precious metals outperform. And we're just looking at some of the ETFs. And that does look like that is the case. But URNM, it's definitely thrown a curveball in there. Um, it looks pretty good in the short term. All I'm going to say is let's hope that this momentum can continue to the upside. Uh, GDX, SILJ, uh, some of these... Uh, other ETFs, they're starting to look pretty good, and they're, I think they're going to start to outperform. Uh, the big question is, and I don't have a definitive answer here, is which way are yields going to go? Are we going to invert more, or are we going to start to uninvert? If we start to uninvert, the market looks like they're positioning for the precious metals to outperform. And that's generally when they outperform. It's fear in the market. Uh, things are slowing down. Things could crash recession type fears. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that we, just because there's fears of recession in the market that we're going to get a, a recession immediately. Uh, this could drag on for, for a couple of years. Uh, why is that? The housing market isn't driving this. The housing market is still robust. It's hanging in there and the inventories are very low. Construction and unemployment from construction hasn't turned and headed lower yet. And that's really what we need to see is we need to see unemployment kick way up. And that's generally uh, the, basically a recession. So I, I just, I think it could be stronger for longer. And that's a window where a lot of these things could outperform. Oil, uh, even oil and uranium and all these other ones, they, they generally do well when the curve's inverted. So that's what we've got. Uh, we'll continue to look at this and monitor it, and I'll continue to share it on the channel, everyone. So give me a thumb up for the content, subscribe to the channel, and subscribe to the website if you'd like. You can see how I'm playing this with the portfolio I've got uh, and the companies that I'm, uh, that I'm buying and what I hold. But that's what I've got for today, guys. And don't forget, we've got a Platinum 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time uh, session on Sunday. See you guys there. Bring your questions, and uh, we'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.